Saint Cisco at the movies. And welcome back. In this particular segment, as we close out morning break, we're going to talk with a couple of folks who are involved in the production of a local comic book. And we're pleased to welcome, first of all, Bob Jashanik, who is the editor, and also he is a sophomore uh, journalism student at the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown, and also Diane Hall, who is uh, one of the illustrators. And uh, we understand, uh, for those folks who may not be aware of, of, of this particular production, you're now into uh, getting it, if I understand, into your third issue. Right. And you're going to be uh, uh, hopefully going uh, for more of these things. But why the idea of a comic book, of all things? Well, it's, uh, it's a pretty unique concept, you know, for the, for the Johnstown area. There was, really, there was really never a comic book, you know, specifically, you know, produced and written and, you know, published and sold in this area. And we, we thought it would be a really unusual idea. And, you know, we, we all like to read comic books, everybody that's involved with it. And, you know, we thought it would be something neat to do. You know, well, see if did we could. it not become a labor of love in the final analysis? Yes, that's, that's about what it is, <laughs> to tell you the truth. We don't, we don't make any money off of it. We're, you know, we're strictly non-profit right now. You know, we're try what we put into the book is what we get out of it. It know? is interesting that the book, it's a comic book, of course, but it deals with a lot of things, pathos and uh, Pencil Man is a mm. marvelous character. Who's, who belongs to Pencil Man? Who created That's, him? Uh, a guy named Kevin Osman. He's in his 30s and he's working with us. He's been with us from the start. Yes, and Pencil Man erases himself to freedom. Isn't that a marvelous concept? Yes. <laughs> it is. A number of different people involved, and you, and you say from kind of like different walks of life. Diane, why? Well, we just um, are all interested in drawing or in telling stories. and. Uh, I was approached to do it, and I said, oh, great, it's something fun. And it's, it's just a, a super experience. Um, it's a learning experience for me, truthfully. Has this been a, uh, talking about learning experiences, putting your, uh, your journalistic training to, uh, to use? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to produce one of these books. You know, you tell people, you put out a comic book, and people look at you and say, oh, sure, you know, it takes you, like, what, 15 minutes, you know? But it's, it really takes a lot of work, you know, getting everybody together and getting, coordinating the art and the stories and getting people to get their work done on time and publishing it. And what about the reaction of family, not only family and friends, but also uh, professors, mm. journalism professors? Well, it's, it's been fairly positive. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're all fairly supportive. You know, they, they like to see any cultural efforts in this area, you know. There's, there, there really isn't that much, you know, locally produced uh, literature or, you know, things of that sort, you know, for culture in this area. And, of course, you know, they support it, you know, wholeheartedly. Bob, you originally had uh, published it as a quarterly magazine. Are you trying mm -hmm. to change that at this point? Well, right now we're going bi-monthly. We're publishing every other month. And uh, we, hope, we hope to go monthly someday, if we ever have enough money. And maybe even weekly. You've got to just think positively, right? Well, we're not right? going to push that. <laughs> Well, you never can tell. Our thanks to Bob and to Diane. Uh, Happy New Year to you. Wish you a continued success with uh, Flood City Comics and uh, that, it, uh, that it does pan out and uh, the production does increase. And maybe they will go to weekly. And also go to color. Uh, you're black and white so. now and uh, go to full color and everything. Monday on morning break, we'll be welcoming Dr. Carl Berger. We'll be talking about the new Johnstown book as well as uh, Paul Diver will be here to talk about basketball exploits. And we'll have a soap scope report for you. So we'll see you Monday. Plants and flowers seen on the morning break set are available at the Flower Barn, Mill Creek Road, Johnstown. Mary's wardrobe furnished by Klein Landers. Appliances on the set furnished by White Westinghouse and Panasonic.